Hi, welcome to the driveway dudes, my dudes. Today, I'm going to be showing you part two of how to add insulation around your windows. If you haven't already, check out part one. I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. Now it's time for the filler. I recommend a smooth finish filler um, because you don't want to do it twice, you just want to do it once. And you want to sand it down, nice smooth finish. So always go with a smooth finish. I'd always use the powder filler as well, the pre-made stuff. I find it's very difficult to uh, sand down afterwards. Uh, right, so this is the way I do it. Right in the middle, this is just an old lid of an old paint bucket. Uh, nice bit in the middle. And then using your scraper, and then taking cold water. Cold water. If you use hot water, it means you have to work faster. And then pour it into the middle of your volcano, and then start tipping it in. So picking up the edges pushing it towards the center. Okay, that's all gone. water going across the lid make the mixing a lot easier Really happy with that neck. Then when you're ready, what I suggest is getting your spray bottle again and dampening up the uh, dampening up the plaster a bit because. If you don't do that, it's just going to suck all the moisture out of the, the filler and uh, using the corners to push it in. Make sure there's no air bubbles. This is way too wet. Yeah. Okay, this is too wet. But that's essentially the principle. What I might do is I might pre-spray everything to give it a chance to soak in so that I'm not left with mess and air bubbles and bulging. Okay. Once the filler is dry, the only thing for it is more sanding. Add masking tape to the window frames. Um, I personally, I, I don't like doing it in big sections, so I just do it in small sections. Uh, I find it helps me get it straighter. Some people will just do a continuous line the whole length, but I find that a little bit, a little bit more complicated. I don't do it very often, so I just do small sections just to make it easy for myself. Once I have the masking tape up, I'm adding a small bead of decorator's caulk, which I'm almost entirely removing again. So basically just pushing it into the very crease of the corner. For the first coat on the plaster, where it's drilled and, and filled, 
um, I am going to use the Swan Coat Damp Seal. I'm not really too worried about uh, moisture gathering in these corners, but but just as a way to seal to seal the plaster and to, uh, to add a base coat, I'm going to do this first. So just got a cheap throwaway brush um, and this stuff you apply liberally as well. So you just whack it on, good and thick. It's uh, not very nice stuff to use, but uh, creates a damp proof seal. And, um, um, and it's easy to paint over. Uh, I'll throw the brush away at the end. It smells, the stuff, I'm not sure what it is. You thin it with white spirits, but it smells like latex. So I'm not sure, I'm just gonna keep working away. And time for undercoat on the wood. So this is the undercoat I'm using. Uh, I quite, quite like this one. And it's not overly expensive, it's pretty good value. So once, I'm, once I've finished the undercoat and it's dried, I'm gonna give it another quick rub down with some 180 sandpaper. So I've just finished my first coat of the emulsion uh, around the window frame. So I used the, the cutting brush, you see it has an angle in it. Cutting brush, I love these brushes, uh, to do the edges. And then I used a small roller to, to fill it in. The reason I'm using the roller rather than the brush the whole time is because the roller will give a softer finish. So if there's anything, any inconsistencies, it'll be harder to see. This is a, this is a fully matte, let's grab here now. This is a matte, washable, a washable matte by Dulux. Uh, brilliant white, uh, I like this. It dries to a matte finish. Uh, which also helps to hide any inconsistencies. So, I'm gonna do the last, I'm gonna do the first top coat. So I've got two undercoats in here because I wasn't getting very good coverage. The first, you see it's still splotchy. See a little bit of the colored wood underneath. So I put two there, and now I'm going to do, uh, the third coat is gonna be the first top coat, so I'm gonna do did two undercoat, I'm gonna do two top coat with this. It's the same, it's hard to see, it's an old tin, and it's been used for a few jobs, Fleetwood. But this is satin wood, so it's not a bright shine, so it's not shiny per se, it's more satin. Uh, brilliant white. Okay, let's get, let's get going. Painting is done, so I have one coat of the moisture proof, damp proof seal, then I have two top coats of, of uh, wash, washable white, um, and then for the window sills, I have two base, uh, two undercoats, and then two top coats. I think it looks pretty good, I think it turned out pretty good. Next step is to remove the masking tape. So I put the painter's caulk along the edge. So if you try to remove the mask and take tape as it is, it's gonna, the painter's caulk is going to pull and tear the paint away. So what I usually use is one of these really, really fine um, blades because they're very, very flexible. So I can press that against the wall so I know that's flat against the wall and I'm cutting exactly along. So I'll do that all the way around and I'll remove all the old mask and tape and then it's job finished. I think it's a pretty decent job. I think it turned out pretty okay. Um, obviously, a professional would probably be shouting at the screen right now, saying I did it, I did it all wrong, but and he could do it ten times better. And I'm sure that is true. I'm not a painter, but this is how I do it. This footage was shot during the summertime. This is really best 
done as a summertime project to be honest i know you need it most in the winter but there was two reasons that, that i did this project um the first being to exclude the draft and the second being that we uh were upgrading the blinds so the we had you know normal roller blinds throughout the house and we were getting the venetian blinds and um i just thought that it would be it would be more useful to do it before I get to Venetian blinds rather than trying to take the Venetian blinds up and down. Uh, you know, just a bit of method to the madness. Anyway, that's it from me for today for this project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.